let's go back to that IBIS talking point. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll, we'll touch a little bit about the IBIS side and then also the bike industry 2023, doom and gloom. Um, I guess starting off with the doom and gloom aspect, do you feel like it's all doom and gloom? Is the bike industry about to fail? Is it just all going downhill? What do you think is happening right now? How's it feel like to you as a bike shop owner? We're still we're growing every every week. We're growing every month. So I'm not feeling it yet. Um, I know there's been some like sales going on, but I mean, you know, like when bikes go on sale, we're getting them from our manufacturers. You know, if we're like we have a a mojo sale going on right now they're 35 percent off i'm buying them at 35 percent off so i'm passing that same savings on to the customer um you just got to embrace it you know um i feel like definitely everybody freaked out a little too quick and started like chopping prices left and right um but you know it's just kind of going back to where it was i don't i don't think anything's I don't, I don't think there's the doom and gloom i think everybody likes to to talk about that and think that it's happening but it's not happening here, you know, and it might just mean that I have to work a little bit harder, you know, um, and I'm willing to do that. You know, if things slow down, then, then I got to step on the gas, you know? All right. Well, and then, so with that, you're definitely starting to see, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily just a coincidence. You're starting to see a lot of budget cuts with companies. Um, a lot of contracts either not being renewed or being terminated early. Like we saw all that stuff going on with the specialized ambassador program. IBIS specifically, re they dropped BKXE and Brian Kennedy. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on a situation like that? Like, do you think that's the right move at this time? And then also, what do you think about Brian Kennedy, what his move should be going forward? Because I have my thoughts, but I mean, what I don't do you know. go first? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about that guy to know. I, I know that um, if IBIS had to cut some things so that they could pay some of their employees, you know, they have a lot of employees there that they, and then you have to take care of your, your, your people, you know, um, if cutting, do I think it's a good idea to cut advertising? I mean, to me, if things are slowing down, I think it's time to press the gas. I think that's when you should not slow, you know, slow up on advertising. But if it's a matter of, you know, I don't, I don't know about it that I don't know enough about it, but I would think that they probably had a pretty good reason just with not that he did anything wrong, but I'm sure they would have a good reason. I've never had any negative dealings with Ibis whatsoever. So if that was something they needed to do, then that's probably why they did it. You that know. makes sense. So, and for those of you who might not <clears throat> be familiar with the situation, Brian Kennedy, BKXC, very popular YouTuber. Uh, I want to say half a million subscribers relatively. Um, recently, he announced that uh, his contract with Ibis was not going to be renewed going forward. Really awesome guy. Brian's probably one of the nicest YouTubers out there, but also I do see it from Ibis's perspective where if things were looking like everything's about to shut, obviously you want to pay your employees. That'd be like the first people you want to take care of and you want yeah, to make yeah, sure you sure. kind of protect the employees. And then when you start talking about media personalities, unfortunately it sounds like those would be the first to go. My perspective on the whole situation is I think for Brian, this might even be a cool, and I mean, Brian's a super smart guy. He's got a really great thing going on. He knows a lot with YouTube and stuff. He's has his own bike brand currently, the, the Trail One, and that's affiliated with a different bike shop, Worldwide Cycling, over on the West Coast. Um, do you see influencers doing more in the bike, because it, it almost makes sense. Like you, you have the following, like these bike companies, they develop a product and then they hire, whether it's an influencer or it's a racer or just some person to promote it. But if you already have that audience like Brian does, I mean, he's seen it with Trail One. He's made his own product and he's promoting it and all kind of works hand in hand. Obviously he's working with a retail shop, but do you see that as the future of the bike industry? Like if someone wants to start a shop right now, do you think it's a random businessman or do you think it's someone who's, I guess the term influencer or even a racer? Hopefully you guys enjoyed that clip from the awesome MTB podcast. To listen to the full podcast, link is in the description or go to your preferred platform like Spotify or iTunes. Also, if you can hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, it really does help us out a lot and we'll see you guys next time. Phew.